Welcome back guys, so today I'll be talking about this laptop, it's a Dell G7 7500. I had it for a month plus now and I gotta tell you that my findings are more favorable than negative. I'll be talking about some things I did not cover before which is gaming, productivity work, plus the pros and cons about this product. So let's get straight to the review and dive into this laptop. This portion of the video is going to be quite simple. I'm going to talk about the drivers for this computer as well as gaming. So this is the portion that most gamers are interested in. Being that this is a 4K uh, screen on this computer, I'm going to tell you that it is awesome, especially since the driver was updated for the Nvidia cards. The driver that I have available and installed on this uh, computer as of two days ago is the version 456.71. So if you have that version on this computer, it enables a couple of different features when you're gaming, especially when it comes to Fortnite, because that's the only game I, I play and there's no other games I usually have uh, patience for to learn. And since that's the only game I, that I play with my kids, well, it just brings it back to my childhood days. Before I go any further, I gotta tell you one thing. When I game, I game my way and that's with a controller. That's the reason why this controller is here with this adapter that's right here. I use an adapter for this laptop, whether it be here or on my PC. So if you're the type of person that likes to game on this keyboard, I got some news for you, but this is how I game. And for that reason, my comparison and my testings are based mostly about with that. When it comes to gaming with this controller, it is flawless, it's very nice. I can set it up to pull into gamer mode and it plays just perfect. And since the driver was updated, I've been able to hit 60 frames per second on the actual screen. And you gotta remember, that's at 4K resolution within this laptop. Before, I was only getting in the teens, about 12 to 25, but mostly in the high teens, and that's it. And that's how I was playing. And I thought it was okay. It was choppy, but it was nowhere near enjoyable. But I played it because of my kids. Now I'm getting 60 frames per second. It's flawless, it's fluid, and it's very nice and enjoyable. For that reason, I do recommend it for gaming. This is the part that's gonna perhaps bother you as a gamer if you are interested in purchasing this laptop. The keyboard does get a little hot and that's because it does not have a shield underneath it. And because of that reason, I, I'll tell you that it's perhaps not gonna be enjoyable. If you have a mouse and the keyboard here is not good, but if you have this mouse, like, like I have it right now with a separate keyboard externally, you'll be able to play without a problem. But with the actual keyboard um, that's included, it does tend to get a little hot and that's because it's quite thin. So you gotta expect that from a laptop of uh, this thinness and thickness for that matter. So if you want to have a good resolution screen, this is it. If you want better performance from a 1080 with higher frame rates per second on your screen, maybe like a, a 144 or whatnot, then do get the other one. I have no clue what that uh, screen looks like or how it performs. But as far as this screen is, I tell you it's a, it's a huge winner. It is 400 nits HDR levels when you want to game. So the brightness are quite bright, your darks are quite dark, and you have a lot of definition within that. It renders one of the most beautiful colors that you'll see on any laptop or any computer for that matter. So it is an overall complete system, but you have to find ways around it to make it work for you. I game the other day for the very first time for about three hours and I enjoyed my whole time doing so. It was awesome. Even my kids were enjoying playing because I was not lagging and I was not dead weight for when they're gaming and I was actually playing with them like I'm supposed to. Now I'm usually a sniper because I'm not that great. Even sniping was a problem and now it's not an issue whatsoever. So for gaming, you're using a controller like I do with an adapter, you'll have no problems. That's my verdict when it comes to uh, gaming. Take it with a grain of salt. If you want great resolution with great colors and 60 frames per second is just perfect for you, plus the ability for you to actually use it for creativity work, this laptop is for you. One of the most impressive portions of this laptop is opening it. And that's because I like the fact that you never need to turn it on. That's a feature that you can disable in the BIOS, but I love that feature, so I'm not disabling that feature whatsoever. I love the fact that I can turn it on, and as soon as I open up the lid, 
all the lights start coming on and it welcomes you, whether you had set it to uh, go to sleep or you had set it to turn off, it will always turn on regardless of what you do. Except for when you actually turn off the computer and leave the lid open, then you actually have to press the power button to turn it back on. Other than that, you really don't need to do so. The other feature that I love about this laptop is what I told you guys before is the touchpad uh, button right here, F11. This is not an issue whatsoever anymore when I put my palm on the touchpad and it does not conflict. That feature I do like. The other feature that I like about this is that dedicated performance gamers button. Turning it on when you want it, it's a huge plus because if your computer starts lagging, it just kicks it right up to where it's supposed to be and you don't worry about it anymore. So. Having that gamers button right here, it's awesome and I love it. It's quite cool. Although I gotta say that lately when it comes to at least gaming, I do not need to use it anymore because the driver has become that much better integrating itself within this laptop that I do not need to use it. So using it only if I want better rates, but I'm not seeing any difference now in performance when it comes to whether I want to, whether I use it or not. Another great feature that I still appreciate about this laptop one month into having it is the LEDs. The LEDs on this laptop are quite nice. How much control you have over the LEDs within the Alienware software. So you can make them pretty dim, medium bright or extremely bright, whatever you may like. Medium settings are perfect for me. The keyboard is backlit just nice and is not overwhelmingly bright. Even in a dark room, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. When it comes to the battery though, the battery does tend to last about two hours like I originally said before. When I'm gaming now though, since because it's able to provide me those uh, 60 frames per second at 4K, it will last only about an hour if you wanna use it. If you're gaming, you really may not want to be under battery load. You may want to actually plug it in because you get better performance. For that reason, I would gotta say, plug it in and you'll get mo the most out of your system. If you're on the go, maybe you you're taking this uh, computer to a coffee shop or whatnot, you'll get if you're using Premiere, about a good two hours solid. If you're using uh, Lightroom or Photoshop, you'll probably end up pushing that to three hours. But with the specs that this computer carries, which is an NVIDIA RTX 2070 with eight gigs of RAM, plus an additional 32 gigs of RAM within the actual motherboard, it is extremely hefty on what it can do. Therefore, it does require a lot of power draw. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any laptops out there that can handle more unless you go thicker or maybe with a bigger screen, like a 17 inch or whatnot, you may get a bigger battery. Even this screen that's 15 inches plus, I would say that sometimes tends to be a little big. I think a 13 would be more than perfect because I believe that 13 inches is perhaps the sweet spot when it comes to laptops, but most laptops are, do not come equipped for performance at 13 inches. So that's a problem. So 15 is where you gotta settle. And 17 for me is just too large. Thus far, 15 here, just about right. So how does it perform with Premiere? Premiere Standard is a solid program right now, but it is not doing the job for me when it comes to ProRes RAW. Even this uh, scenario right now, when I'm shooting with the Z6, this is ProRes RAW 4K at 24 frames per second. And the only way I can use this files from the Z6 is by using Premiere Beta. Because Premiere Beta is the only software right now that I have for PC that allows me to use the log conversion from uh, raw to log and apply the uh, LUTs that are available from Nikons. Because of that reason, I need to use Premiere Beta. And Premiere Beta is perhaps not the most stable program there is. After so long, it tends to get flustering and whatnot. So, and if it does, all you have to do is just shut off the program and restart it and it comes right back up and it works just fine. So that's the only issue I have with Premiere Beta is the fact that it does tend to choke, but it has nothing to do with the computer itself. The computer itself does give it all the fuel that it requires for it to run, but Premiere Beta is just not that strong yet. But when I run regular Premiere, it runs flawlessly. There's no issues. For photography, you're gonna love this screen. It has the best screen available out there for laptops that I have seen. Not just that, but it's able to render 100% of the RGB scale and 99% of the DCI P3 scale, which is pretty much at par with the Macs offer. I'm getting 99%, although it's being advertised like giving you 100%. When calibrating this screen, it tends to shift a little more towards the red and yellow because the Spider X comes with this tuning software included within. I'm able to shift that final tone that is more towards the yellow and red to where it's supposed to be, maybe more green and more blue. So I neutralize it as much as I can see to be where I want it to be. Photos should not be an issue for editing in this computer and for video, well, video just got mu that much better too because I'm no longer seeing more yellow on that either for Rec. 7 or 9. Rec. 7 or 9 now looks just perfect on this laptop and for HDR as well. So when it comes to those features, this laptop does render some of great colors and I do not believe you will have any issues when it comes to Premiere or any Adobe product whatsoever.
Now let's get to the drawbacks or the cons of this laptop and some of them tend to lean a little more heavy towards it being like an actual issue and some of them are not, you know? And for me, I tend to pick on everything and then at the end, I just discard them all because I like the laptop that much, you know? So one of the things that, that I have a pet peeve with this thing is the fact that it smears quite easy. Being black tonality and whatnot, you can have your fingerprints on this it will, it will stay on. So if I go like this, maybe I'm able to show it. Don't know, but maybe I'm going to go, I'm going to bring this slightly up. But your prints do stay. Um, don't know if it will show, but hopefully it does. Uh, maybe about right there. Maybe it's where it shows. Anyways, so it does tend to smear quite easy with your fingerprints. But the good thing about it is that it's also easily cleanable. Due to the fact that none of the things here, the emblems or the keyboard or anything on this, except for the two stickers right here that say RTX and Core i7, that's the only thing that may, may eventually come off. You can clean it, nothing will ever smear off because the keyboard, for example, it's all backlit. There's nothing on it that will rub off. And when it's clean, it looks beautiful. I really love it. But when it's dirty, it bothers me. Headphones. Headphones is what you need. These headphones here I have are from Audio Technica. And they do a really good job. By far the best headphones I've purchased. They're almost like noise cancellation and they work really nice. I never hear the fans one bit. When I have it on, it's perfect. Plus the fact that it has a real nice drivers. The audio quality on this is by far the best. And I do own a couple of different wireless headsets, but this ones are quite awesome. And uh, I'll leave a description on the bottom if you're interested in it. So two extra cons that I would like to mention are this. One of them is the charging brick. I have it right here. See how large it is compared to the laptop it's almost half the weight half of it you know it's quite large that's what i hate about this laptop is the fact that it has a very large brick that you have to carry around the pros to that brick is that it will charge your laptop within an hour without a problem every single time so that's my review i hope that by now you have subscribed and i truly appreciate it if you have but if you haven't please do and also please share or leave your comments down below as well as like this video. It does help me. It does help me quite a bit. And if you were to purchase any items from down below in the description, it does help me out as well. I appreciate every one of you guys, new and old members. Until the next time, thank you. And I'll see you.